Yeah, I'm going to read a few verses in chapter 4. I'm going back and read a few verses in chapter 3. And then I'm going back to 1 Thessalonians. And this might be very well one of those days that we read Scripture and let you go home. We'll see what the good Lord does. But I feel like that we, uh, according to the way that, uh, that the Bible uh, teaches me, and I understand some of it, and I feel like that we are living in the last day. Uh, I've heard the old preachers several times in my lifetime they were living in the uh, Saturday evening, and it's 11.59. Got one minute before the Lord comes back. Well, that's something to think about, ain't it? But anyway, we know he's coming back, and we know he's going to get his bride, uh, those that are believers, those that are born again. And if they're not, then they'll be left behind. My, the saddest thought that you can think of, is to be unsaved and left behind. You just, I mean, I, I, I can read and understand a little bit in Revelation enough to know that I don't want to be left behind. But, uh, I mean, common sense tells me that I don't want to be left behind because the Bible tells us what's going to happen and uh, there'll be no, oh, just think about that. It, you, people used to say, well, there'll be no children. There'll be no crying in heaven from children. There'll be none of that. But to me, there'll be no sweet Holy Spirit. There'll be no comfort from the Spirit of God. Be walking in the walls of hell. I'm telling you, walk in there, and uh, the Bible says where the fire is not clean. Well, I'm telling you, it's sad to think about dying lost. Second Timothy chapter number 4. First two verses again are... I feel like that they, uh, the Lord directed them when he gave them to uh, anybody, but he gave them to preachers. He said, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering." Lord, we thank you tonight for the reading of your word. Father, we thank you tonight for this privilege to come. Thank you for the good singing, Lord. You bless us every time we get up and move and breathe. Father, you bless us in so many different ways. Lord, we could never say enough. But Lord oh, Jesus, how we thank you tonight, Lord, for the day that you saved our soul. God, how we pray. Father, you just help us to live in that joy, that reality, and that peace, and that knowledge to know. Help us tonight, Lord, as we look into the Word. I can't say nothing, Lord, except what the Holy Spirit gives you, Word directs. Help us, Father, bless your Word, and help your servant. We'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' sweet name we ask. Amen. Paul was talking to Timothy. He was giving him some instructions, but uh, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, much of it is directed toward the last day. The last days. That's the last days before the Lord comes. And uh, uh, Paul's telling Timothy here, he said, this is the charge. That was the charge that was given to me uh, almost 50 years ago here in the church uh, to preach the gospel. And I thought as I read uh, the, the verse, the second verse, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Well, I tell you, if you was around Zion Church 30, 40 years ago, you'd understand what that meant. You, as a young preacher, you were supposed to pray. I mean, an old preacher as well, but especially the young preacher. You were supposed to study. You were supposed to pray. You were supposed to be ready. And oftentimes, the old-time pastors in this church, you'd walk in the door, and these two or three of us, they'd say, you're going first, you're going second, and we had the service. Now, I'm telling you, I don't like to use this phrase, but this time to us, I caught my pants down. <laughs> I hadn't studied and I hadn't prayed enough. And boy, I'm telling you, it didn't take me long to learn. Uh, those men was just telling me what the Bible said. Study, pray, be ready. Then he goes on 
in verse 3, and this is part of the reason why, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now you listen tonight just a little bit here as we read these verses and think about and look around at what kind of time that we're in. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall uh, be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Church, if there's ever been a time that we're living in that time right there, a time, folks say, well, you know, it bothers me. So I'm telling you, I've heard so many preachers uh, talk and, and and you you have to let it you have to be that way. I mean, I come in on Sunday morning and there's 25, 30, 35, a few more sometimes, and you come back and you crowd's a little bit smaller. But I'm telling you, I struggle sometimes to keep from getting discouraged. But God helps me by helping me to see I don't like it, I don't want it, I don't want to be a part of it. But we're living in the last days. Now when I say I don't want to be a part of it, I simply mean a part of the crowd that's quitting. Now, I don't know why. I have no answer. But we're living in the last days. He said, they will, uh, a time will come. They'll not endure sound doctrine. Now, we're criticized most of the time. Ah, you're one of them old King James Bible people. That's what you are. Amen. You say, why do you so hard-nosed on that? Well, I tell you. You just think for a minute. I have four daughters. Now, I'm married. Part of them got children. Now, let's just suppose for a few seconds here that I say, all right, I'm going to switch over to that NIV. It's not too bad. I mean, it just changes a few things here, there, and yonder. Well, if I do that, then uh, five years or whatever from now, my daughters come through and they say, well, Dad said we didn't have to have that King James. That's exactly where we're at right now. Folks have said they'll take this and it's easier to understand. They'll take this and because they like it better. They'll take this and, and brother, uh, the, uh, the ones that take sin out of it, sin is sin in this Bible. And I don't care what other Bible you come up with, sin is still sin if God said it for. Now, he said there'll come a time when they won't endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they uh, heap uh, 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 to themselves teachers having itching ears. They'll turn away. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed it or not, but I think Earl Blevins is the one that got me started uh, a little bit watching YouTube. And I listen to YouTube all the time. And about all I see is gospel music or uh, uh, funniest videos. We've seen them funniest videos so many times we can tell you everything's going to happen on them before it ever happened. But we watch gospel music. Now, I don't know. You, you won't come to my house. You don't believe me. I'll, I'll set you down there in front of that television, that Roku, whatever that is. That's all we got. And brother, they are, there's a whole row of people criticizing preachers that are what they believe to be false doctrine. I mean, big name preachers, big churches, mega churches. They're, they're, they're tearing them all to pieces. I sit with my own ears and listen, and I hope to God she's not one of your fans, but if she is, I'm sorry. But I sat there and listened the other day just to catch a glimpse of what was going on. Oprah went for stepped out there and she said, let me tell you the God that I serve, he doesn't care if you're black or white. The God that I serve, he don't care if you're uh, rich or poor. The God, and she kept a naming and before she quit, she said, the God I serve, he, it doesn't matter to him if you was born gay or homosexual. Let me tell you something tonight, church, that you already know 
They ain't nobody born that way. That's a choice that they made. God didn't bring nobody into the world like that. He told in the word of God that it was wrong. It was wrong. It was wrong. I've heard some of that stuff. They're turning away. This is okay. That's okay. Get rid of the King James Bible. Get rid of our old preachers just slobber and snort. We don't want them. These churches all over the area that uh, that are dismissing Sunday night. Uh, some are uh, dismissing this and they are without pastor. I know for a fact that there's a church in Tennessee sometime back, they'd been without a pastor for 10 years. Met out and just had a lesson and went home. Now a, they are slipping away. They're pushing back sound doctrine. They don't want nothing. The Bible tells you right there that it's going to happen. It's not my theory. What I'm saying to you, I can go to the Bible and get it out. Look what he done to Sodom and Gomorrah because they turned to that kind of thing. Now let's go over to chapter 3. Chapter 3 and verse number 1. This, no. Get that now. If you got a Bible, read that. This, no. Also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Troublesome, wicked, can't understand. For men, oh, shall be lovers of their own selves. What about that? I didn't say that. God did. I just repeated what he said. Covetous, boasters, proud, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Oh, Lord Jesus, don't that not there just burn you hide? Me and Denise watched the little old I believe the man was involved, but we watched a woman, God love her. Ain't got no idea who she was. And she had uh, three little old youngins there, and up the little boy, uh, they got him some. Now, without a doubt, it was a bribe. Now, you be good and you get this. Well, he wanted it, and they wouldn't give it to him. Started jumping up and down. If you don't straighten up, I'm going to whip you right here. As a lie. She wasn't going to touch that youngin. I never told them I know such a stuff. I told them that before we went into the store. And I know right now we're living in those times where if you punish one anyway except for time out or taking their toys or taking their cell phone, you get in trouble. Thank God that wasn't in policy when I raised mine. I'd have never got out of jail, Randy. I'd have stayed in jail. I whipped mine, brother. I got four daughters up yonder in church tonight. Thank God, hallelujah, because they had a mother that raised them out and they served a God that kept them in line. Now, he said without natural affection. Boy, I mean, isn't that what we're seeing? Don't it just about make you puke to see a, a couple of men or a couple of women? Oh, have mercy. Oh! Yeah, yeah, that's right there, way, brother. All this stuff, it's wrong. God don't approve of it. It's a choice that they make. All right. Traitors. No, I didn't. I didn't finish. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and led silly women laden with sin and uh, led away with uh, a divers lust. This is what the Bible says. It's wrong. Sin's still wrong. God, God's not going to uh, say, well, uh, you, uh, over in the book of Acts chapter 17, I believe it is. He said there was a time of ignorance. But not now. 
You say, Ricky, what's the difference? Because on the day of Pentecost, he gave the Holy Spirit of God to every believer. He gave the old saints of all the, the wisdom to interpret the Word of God, understand the, uh, the, the Bible uh, that was pinned down by uh, uh, holy men. Uh, and brother, now you have the Word of God. You have uh, uh, the Spirit of God. And there's no excuse for ignorance. Sometimes my heart breaks when I think about all the preachers. I'm honest, and I love them. God knows I do. But I, I can name you about 10, 12 pretty quick. Preached in my pulpit, been friends with, still am. Still am. And I think to myself, why? Why? Only by God's grace is the only reason I'm not there. The church, He equipped us. He equipped us to what we needed. To live a Christian life, to walk a Christian walk, and that's what Paul's pace passing on to Timothy. We have the equipment to, to withstand and to, to draw out of God and get strength and rebuke the devil. We can't do it within ourselves. We can do it through Jesus. Hallelujah. We can do it through Jesus. Now, one more place in, in Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, chapter number. Five. First Thessalonians. Now you see what kind of time we're in. You see what kind of falling away of false uh, uh, worship and, and, and meeting out and going through a, a, a form and a fashion. Now I've, I've had some run-ins a time or two in churches and they want to have a children's church. And uh, Boy, I mean, they just, they just insisted. Now, I'm going to tell you, my idea of a child's church or children's church is to take them into a Sunday school class from 10 or 10.15 to uh, 10.30, 10.45, 11 o'clock or something for an hour there and let the teacher do their best to plant something in their little heart. Now, that's the end of children's church. After that, they need to sit in the house of God, in the church, and they need to listen to, to the, the, the singing and the preaching. They need to be around the things of God. I've never seen a child yet that I couldn't preach louder than it was a cry. I mean, come on, give us a break. Now, don't you listen to these next few verses. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no 